Hey there, friends. I want to put out a video on something that's happening up in Holyoke, Massachusetts. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. I'm from Louisiana, so people from Massachusetts pronounce a lot of names wrong down here, and I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. Big thank you to John Crump for putting this story out. As always, John is on top of everything. Thank you, John. But a man is facing charges of violating the NFA. <clears throat> Daniel A. Augusto, 56 years old, was charged with one count of possessing machine guns, six counts of unlawful possession of unregistered firearms, and one count of making false statements to federal agents. He was arraigned in federal court in Springfield on Friday. Now, this is an ongoing investigation from February of this year where federal and local law enforcement agencies uh, have uh, made the claim that Mr. Augusto was in unlawful possession of multiple unregistered firearms. Under Massachusetts state law, a gun owner must register their firearms. They also found several standard capacity magazines that Massachusetts considers high capacity magazines, incorrectly stated on their part. Also, two suppressors lacking markings. You guys will know that you can actually make your own suppressors. You just have to uh, ask for permission for a little number to go on them, a serial number from the federal government, and he did not do that. The ATF also claims that Mr. Augusto had 42 machine gun conversion devices. 38 of these were Glock machine gun conversion switches. You guys are familiar with those, the giggle switch that we call them. And of course, there were several of those. So the guy definitely had some things that the ATF was not happy with. The thing that bothers me is that he had four force reset triggers, the FRTs, the FRT-15, there were three of those from um, Rare Breed Triggers. There's been a lot of debate about those over the last several months, maybe in the last year about those being called uh, machine guns. The trigger themselves being called a machine gun. Well, that's what they're using here. In many cases, the ATF has a tendency to have these stupid, ridiculous, ambiguous charges that they can pile onto something as a tack-on charge to really, really drive a point home. They, they clearly have a hard-on for this guy right here. So they're loving these tack-on charges. So they're, they're using these additional charges that they probably wouldn't have gone after him for. But the fact that they have him on other things like the Glock switches gives them an opportunity to tack on more charges to make his sentence a whole lot uh, worse. And the real reason behind this isn't necessarily to put this man away for a long time, which actually he could be. He's facing a sentence of up to 10 years in prison, up to three years of supervised release, and fine up to $250,000 for each NFA violation. Their real intent here is to intimidate us. They want us to see this. They're looking to make an example out of this guy. This guy is a fall guy. They're going to use him to beat up, to bully, to intimidate, and to treat him as poorly as they possibly can and to levy as many fines and jail time, whatever they can, at this guy so that you and I look at that and go, well, I'm definitely not going to do anything of what he just did. Again, many of these are tack-on charges, but they're going to pile these on this poor guy uh, unjustly because they see this as an opportunity to send a message to us. Unfortunately, that's the ATS MO. Come <laughs> on!